Hey everyone, this is Brother D and I'm here to evaluate some powered parachute crash videos. The focus of this episode deals with stalls and collapses. I thought this would be an intriguing subject because some people may not realize that a powered parachute wing can stall under certain conditions. Also, I've had people tell me that a powered parachute wing can't collapse. It can happen to a powered paraglider, but not to a PPC. Well, don't believe what people tell you. A powered parachute wing can collapse, and it can stall, and this is what we're going to see today. So let's go ahead and get started with our videos. This first video is posted by a user named What You Haven't Seen, and it's called Powered Parachute Double Fatality. It shows a fatal accident that occurred on August 24th of 2012 at Silver Lake State Park in Hart, Michigan. And let me warn you, it's really hard to watch. Notice by the flags flapping that the wind is blowing really hard. The pilot's also flying over some sand dunes. And it's suggested that the wind blowing over the dunes created rotors which collapsed the wing. Notice also that the wing tries to reinflate, but there's not enough altitude to recover. So a PPC flight instructor took a look at this video and noted that two additional links per side were added to the rear risers, which would have raised the rear of the chute by approximately three inches over its intended connection point. In addition to the extra links, the front lines of the chute had apparently been knotted. Uh, this is in order to lower the leading edge. So why would someone do this? Well, in one of the comments, Someone said this is done basically to make the wing more aerodynamic so that it will fly faster, but it also decreases stability. The PPC flight instructor concluded, quote, it is my belief that due to the additional links being added and lines being knotted, that it decreased the angle of attack to the point that it collapsed when confronted with the gust and subsequent downward pitch of the wing. So let's move on to our next video. This next video is posted by a user named Tom Reed, and it's called Bob's Powered Parachute Stalls and Falls. So, as he takes off, you can see that he's flying a single seater, and the chute is rather large looking for that small airframe. The wing looks fairly normal until you see the rear view, which shows that the trailing edge is pretty tight. The FAA's Powered Parachute Flying Handbook states that, quote, the PPC is specifically designed to fly at an angle of attack to avoid stalls and that it is, quote, resistant to stalls. So it avoids stalls and it's resistant to stalls, but it doesn't say that a stall can't happen. There are four situations that could contribute to a stall in a PPC according to the FAA. Without going into a whole lot of detail on each, here they are. Number one, a large increase in wing drag, like a full flare. Number two, a quick full RPM throttle input. Number three, a quick reduction of throttle during a high pitch angle climb. And number four, wing gusts for flying in turbulent air. So it looks like reason number one, which is a large increase in wing drag, it seems like that's the culprit. It seems like that's what caused the problem. One user named Dagstermeister commented, the wing is a 550 square foot, the craft is very light, the wing is very lightly loaded as a result, a light load with a high drag 550 wing results in slow air speed. Now add to the equation that he applies full brake. With an already slow air speed over the wing, lift is already at the edge. The video shows what happens then. The cart nose is up, forward speed is lost, air movement over the wing stops and the wing and cart slides back to the earth. Now, let's move on to the next video. This next video is posted by a user named Fop Church OH, and it's called Paraplane Crash. Now, Paraplane, in case you didn't know, was the brand name of the very first powered parachute, 
but in this video it appears to be a Buckeye powered parachute. Let's take a look at this video. Now that's a funny caption, being that there's nothing safe about what happens next. Notice how when the chute inflates, that it's leaning kind of backwards as though it's in a locked out position. A lockout is actually a stall that takes place while on the ground. And notice the trailing edge, how it's pulled pretty tight. When the craft becomes airborne, the wing almost stalls again, and then they start losing altitude. A user named Kurt Spray commented that, quote, the steering lines are way too tight. You shouldn't have the trailing edge pulled down so far. It stalled. The wing should be flat. Loosen those steering lines. In the last video we looked at, the trailing edge was pulled down too far as the pilot applied full brake by pushing on both steering bars, thus pulling on both steering lines and causing a stall. Another thing that can cause the steering lines and thus the trailing edge to be pulled too tight is improper rigging. So you need to be really careful that the steering lines are adjusted properly before takeoff. Let's now move on to our next video. This next video is another one posted by Tom Reed and it's called Powered Parachute Homemade Stalls and Falls. As this powered parachute is flying along, Notice, as in some of the other videos, that the trailing edge seems to be pulled pretty tight. It also seems that he's dealing with some wind gusts, and he applies full throttle with his wing in a high drag situation. It's not hard to guess where this is going. It's a little crazy that their reaction is not, let's go see if this guy's okay, but oh man, what happened? And then another guy responds, he fell out of the envelope. These bystanders were more concerned with analyzing aerodynamics than checking to see if this guy was okay. That's really sad. A user named Pip Kajaj commented that, quote, the wing was with brakes constantly on, flew with trailing edge constantly deflected, probably adjusted short. This sounds like improper rigging of the steering lines like what we saw in the previous video. Another user named Terry Blount said, quote, He's obviously flying with a 500 or 550 square foot chute. I have done this in a single seater that I built and you will stall and the edges of your chute will collapse in all caps, he says. This too is something that we've already seen in a previous video, which is flying with a wing that's way too large for a light airframe. So what's our takeaway from these videos? First, don't let anyone tell you that a powered parachute wing can't stall or collapse. Pilot error seems to have been the main factor in these videos. If you want to reduce your chances of having a stall or collapse, here's what you need to consider. Uh, do not fly in gusty conditions. Do not fly on the downwind side of a hill or obstacle that might produce rotors. Do not modify your wing beyond manufacturer specifications. Do not fail to check the tension on your steering lines and do not fly a wing that is way too large for your airframe weight. And though the draw of the powered parachuting seems to be flying at low altitudes, always remember that altitude is your friend. Powered parachuting is relatively safe when compared to fixed wing aircraft, but it's still possible to do dumb things to get yourself killed. So my advice for when you've purchased a new aircraft or made any modifications is to get it checked out by an aircraft mechanic who has a lot of experience maintaining and flying powered parachutes. So that's it till our next video. Uh, be sure to comment in the comment section and also be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. Let's see these legs. Oh. <laughs> Broken bone. Oh. Broken bone. <laughs> This is this is where they well, came down. Hey Cliff, here's where your leg broke your leg broke that thing, man. Your foot broke this fight right.